Why is purple stri seen in Cushing syndrome? To answer this question, one needs to understand what is Cushing syndrome, what's purple stri, and then know the link between the two. The term syndrome means a group of signs and symptoms that occur together and characterize a particular abnormality or condition. The term Cushing syndrome is an eponym used to describe a group of signs and symptoms that was first identified by Harvey Cushing. Cushing syndrome is seen due, due to prolonged excessive levels of glucocorticoids. It is a group of clinical conditions that occur due to prolonged excessive levels of glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids or cholesterol derived steroid hormones synthesized and secreted by the adrenal cortex. Cushing syndrome is also known as hypercortisol state because the primary glucocorticoid that is secreted and released by the adrenal gland is cortisol in humans. So when there is excess glucocorticoids, it is also termed as a hypercortisol state referring to the primary glucocorticoid that is released in humans. Here is a picture of purple striae and some more pictures. You can see the presence of the purple striae in the abdomen. This is very different from the usual stretch marks that is seen due to weight loss or stretching of the skin in pregnancy. In that case, you can notice that the purple appearance is not so evident. The skin is just stretched and there are marks that appear due to the excessive stretch of the skin. This is stretch mark seen in a pregnant woman. The term striae means stretch marks and purple striae means purplish appearance of the stretch marks. This is seen in people who have Cushing syndrome. If you need to know the reason why this happens, you have to find out the actions of the hormone that are found in excess in this syndrome. You just learn that cortisol is found in excess in Cushing syndrome. If you know the actions of cortisol hormone, you can easily understand why this purple stretch marks of, or purple striae occur in Cushing syndrome. With regards to understanding the purple striae in Cushing syndrome, you have to know the actions of glucocorticoids or the hormone cortisol on fat and protein metabolism. On fat metabolism, the glucocorticoids have a lipogenic role. Here, the term is derived from the terms lipid, which means fat, and lipogenic, meaning the synthesis of fat. The fat here is in the form of fatty acids and triglycerides. On fat metabolism, the glucocorticoids have a role in increasing the differentiation of adipose tissue cells and thereby stimulating lipogenesis. Now, what is this differentiation of adipose tissue cells? The adipose tissue cells are in a pre form that is pre adipose sites where which is not a mature form it is an immature form of adipocyte the glucocorticoids act on these pre adipocyte cells and convert them into mature adipocytes these mature adipocytes are capable of synthesizing and storing fat mainly in the form of triglycerides and fatty acids. So glucocorticoids have a lipogenic role by increasing the differentiation of adipose tissue cells 
into mature adipocytes and thereby stimulating the synthesis and storage of fat. The lipogenic effect of glucocorticoids varies in different regions of the body. There is selective accumulation of fat in certain regions of the body such as the trunk, the face and the back. And this leads to the characteristic features which are triangle obesity, moon face and buffalo hump or dowager's hump seen in Cushing syndrome. In this image, triangle obesity has been depicted. Trunk is the area of the body that contains the chest, abdomen, pelvis and the back. It is the main part of the body which contains the chest, abdomen, pelvis and the back. And in Cushing syndrome, there is truncal obesity that is accumulation of fat selectively in the trunk region of the body. And you can also notice that the extremities, the hands and the feet are thinner. There is no fat accumulation in those areas. The extremities are spat whereas the trunk is obese due to fat accumulation. And this appearance is also termed as the lemon on stick appearance. So the truncal obesity where there is excessive accumulation of fat in the trunk of the body with relative sparring of the extremities is also described as the lemon on stick appearance. This image shows the face of a woman who has been affected by Cushing syndrome. Due to the effect of excess cortisol, there is excess accumulation of fat in the face. This leads to a round appearance of the face that is also termed as the moon face. And this is the image of the same woman after the Cushing syndrome has been treated. So there is no more excess cortisol, no more excess accumulation of fat in the face and you do not see the roundness in the face due to fat accumulation. Whereas this is before treatment, you can see the effect of excess cortisol leading to excess accumulation of fat in the face and that has been described as moon face. Also notice that there is excessive accumulation of fat in the back in the interscapular region that is in between the shoulder blades or the scapula. And this appearance is termed as the buffalo hump appearance. Glucocorticoids also induce the synthesis of hormones neuropeptide NPY and leptin, which in turn act on the appetite center present in the hypothalamus, increasing appetite, thereby increasing the intake of food, leading to more fat synthesis. On protein metabolism, glucocorticoids have catabolic effect and anti-anabolic effect. Catabolism and anabolism are the two broad categories of metabolism, where catabolism is the process where complex macromolecules are broken down into smaller molecules, whereas in anabolism, complex molecules are produced. So in case of protein, catabolism means the lysis or breakdown of protein into smaller molecules, that is amino acids. Amino acids join together to make a protein and when protein is broken down, it releases amino acids. And glucocorticoids have a catabolic effect where they break down protein into smaller amino acids. And this effect is pronounced in the skeletal muscle and the tissues other than the liver. Extra hepatic is the tissues other than the liver. So in skeletal muscle and other tissues other than the liver, the glucocorticoids have a catabolic effect on protein metabolism. That is, they cause proteolysis, that is the breakdown of protein. Except in the liver, they increase the synthesis of protein. Also, they have an anti-anabolic effect in general. Anti-anabolic effect means 
they prevent the synthesis of protein so they inhibit the synthesis of new proteins so due to the effect of glucocorticoids there is breakdown of proteins and also new protein is not synthesized so when there is excess glucocorticoids in a condition like Cushing syndrome there will be increased breakdown of protein which is very evident physically in the skeletal muscles so you can see the thinning of the muscles due to proteolysis and also new protein is not being synthesized this leads to general weakness and the less protein the uh, lysis of protein and the breakdown of protein is well evident physically as the weakness of muscles so here you see the physical manifestations of the effects of glucocorticoids on protein and fat metabolism due to selective accumulation of fat in the trunk there is trunkal obesity and due to the proteolytic effect there is thinning of the extremities and this effect of accumulation of fat selectively in the center and the proteolytic effect can also be used to explain the appearance of purple striae the purple striae seen in Cushing syndrome is also known as cutaneous abdominal striae or livid stretch marks these are stretch marks seen in the abdomen which have a purplish color the reason why this is seen is due to the combined effect of protein catabolism and excess accumulation of fat in the subcutaneous tissue you learned that glucocorticoids have a catabolic effect on proteins that is they break down protein the skin in general is made up of proteins mainly the collagen type of protein so when there is breakdown of protein due to cortisol that also affects the skin the skin including the subcutaneous tissue becomes thin due to protein catabolism the skin is made up of three layers namely the epidermis dermis and the hypodermis the hypodermis is also termed as the subcutaneous tissue the subcutaneous tissue is made up of fat nerves blood vessels and protein so due to the effect of increase in protein catabolism the subcutaneous tissues also become thin and weak and because of increase in fat deposition that is increase in fat accumulation due to the effect of cortisol hormone there is increase in subcutaneous fat deposition in the abdomen so in people with Cushing syndrome the skin over the abdomen is weak because of protein catabolism and in addition to that there is excess accumulation of fat in the abdominal region this combined effect of thinness of the skin with the accumulation of fat over the abdomen leads to stretching of the abdomen and this stretching leads to easy tearing of the subcutaneous tissues because they are very weak and this weak subcutaneous tissues are stretched by the increase in fat deposition leading to easy tearing of the subcutaneous tissues and the subcutaneous tissues contain blood vessels when they are stretched there is tearing of the blood vessels in the subcutaneous tissue leading to the breakdown of vessels causing the characteristic purplish stretch mark appearance that is the purplish striae appearance in Cushing syndrome and so in purple striae the breakdown of blood vessels leads to some minor bleeding that is evident outside as the purple striae appearance in Cushing syndrome. This picture shows many of the features of Cushing syndrome such as moon face, trunkal obesity, 
buffalo hump appearance in addition to that there is easy bruising of the skin because the subcutaneous tissues are weak the blood vessels which are made up of protein are also weak leading to easy breakage of the blood vessels leading to easy bleeding so there is easy bruising and ecchymosis and red cheeks and also in addition to that you can see there is thinness of the arms and legs thin extremities also due to protein loss and there is poor wound healing because of protein loss and the proteins in the lymphoid tissue are not synthesized enough leading to weakness in the immunity function leading to poor wound healing and the bones also become weak because the bones are made up of protein mainly the collagen type protein because of the breakdown of protein the bones become weak leading to osteoporosis in addition to that due to the effect of cortisol there is also high blood pressure in people with Cushing syndrome note that the source of this excess glucocorticoid can be exogenous or endogenous endogenous meaning produced within the body itself or exogenous that is taken from outside so glucocorticoids are mainly steroid hormones in some diseases steroids are used to treat the condition and also some people misuse steroids that could be another factor that leads to the excess accumulation of cortisol in the body leading to Cushing syndrome thanks for watching this video if you found it to be helpful do click the like Leave your feedback in the comments below and let me know if you would like me to cover any other topics and share it with others. Do subscribe so that you can get posted whenever I upload a new video. See you next time. Until then, happy learning.